Hello everybody, how are you? Happy St. Patrick's Day. I know about a week early, but all of March it's St. Patrick's Day, right? Thank you everybody for watching. Thank you to all you wonderful libraries out there who are participating. And we are going to make some wonderful Irish food for you and your family. Everybody, my name is Chef Rob. I live in Long Island, and I'm happy to be with all the different states all across the country. Uh, it's a wonderful, wonderful thing to be doing this for you. Uh, great for the libraries, great for the patrons, great for myself. We look forward to this all the time. Chris is here with me. He will see if you have any questions or comments. I want to get the... Uh, corned beef going because it takes eight hours if you do it in a slow cooker, okay? You want to cook corned beef very, very slow, okay, on a low temperature. If you cook it on a high temperature and you want to try and get it done, it's going to be very tough. So just listen to some of the tips I have for you as we go along, okay? So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put my vegetables in a six-quart crock pot. Okay, I'm going to put in about one and a half pounds of red potatoes. Yes, Chris? Judith said, hi, looking forward to this presentation. I have one question about the corned beef. Uh, do you need to use stout beer? I don't usually cook with beer. Thanks. Uh, for this recipe, I would say yes. Uh, it does give it a great, great flavor in here. Okay, it will not come off like if you were just drinking stout beer, what tastes like almost like a, a bitter dark chocolate or a coffee. It really does help flavor the corned beef. Okay, so that it's a preference. I always try to say whenever you're doing my recipes, always try to try to use the same ingredients I'm using. That way you know whether you want to switch anything for next time. So all of these vegetables will go in this crock pot right here. I'm going to put three to four carrots. These are pretty large carrots. I'm going to cut them into two inch chunks. Okay. And if you want to buy a lean cut of meat, you always want to buy the flat part. Okay. The flat part is just like this. I will hold it up soon. If you want a fattier cut, a little more tender, you're looking for the point, okay? So you look for the point cut. Every family member wants different cuts of it. If you want the point and the flat, you buy the whole one and you get the best of both worlds, okay? John X, where is the recipe? The recipes are at the library from where you are watching it. If you're watching it from my Facebook page, Simply Creative Chef Rob, then you would see it on there as well. But if you signed up through a library, uh, your library should have it up there, okay? Paul X, do you have a tip to reduce the salt in corned beef? Can it be soaked in cold water for a period of time? You can rinse the... Rinse the corned beef many, many times to get whatever salt you can off of it. But it is so soaked into the corned beef. That's what it does give it the flavor. Okay. Uh, so just rinse it off as many times as you can and then start cooking it. I am going to put in one large onion and I'm cutting it into half inch uh, slices. Okay. Just almost like wedges, kind of doing like this. Timothy said the recipe calls for a four-pound piece of corned beef. Is that correct? Yes, it is correct. Is that going to yield eight servings? I've made corned beef in the crock pot in the past, and corned beef usually shrivels down. It shrivels down tremendously. So never be afraid to buy a bigger cut than uh, if it looks like this, and you, and you say, oh, I'm close, I don't know if it's going to feed my family. Buy one like this, okay? Because it really does cook. Think about it. Eight hours in a crock pot, it's going to really cook down. I'm going to show you mine, okay, in a second. Ray X, what's the difference between flat cut corned beef and point? Okay, the flat, uh, which I was just talking about, is a leaner cut. The point will have a more fat on it, and it's a fattier cut, okay, which will be a little more tender, will uh, break down a little easier. Tom X, how long cooking of cabbage or carrots? Well, the cabbage and carrots is going to be later on that we're going to do it, okay? And I will go over that in just a little bit. Everybody, I just want to show you what I have in here. I have in the red potatoes, I have carrots, I have celery, I have onion. 
I'm also going to put two to three sprigs of the fresh thyme. Try to use the fresh thyme, okay? If you're not using it and you're using the dried, then see I'm just putting it right in here, okay? If you're using the dried, use half of the amount, okay? Em Emily asks, can I use point and flat together in crock pot? Absolutely. Yep, that would act, be called the, the whole brisket, okay? Al said, hi Rob, what are you cooking today? Corned beef and cabbage in a slow cooker, and then we're going to be doing more dishes, okay? So everybody, I have all the vegetables in here. I am now going to add in my corned beef brisket. Just going to kind of hold this one up, okay? This one is the flat one, okay? So you will see the meat, okay? It will be a very clear cut, okay? This is a leaner cut. So I am going to put this down. You always want to make sure that you have some fat on top. It is very, very important for that. Neil asks, where is the best place to store potatoes? To store potatoes in a cool, dark place. If you got a basement, okay, or even the garage coming up, if they're in the spring or fall, perfect there. I'm gonna put in 12 ounces of the stout beer. Again, this is really gonna uh, infuse the corned beef and uh, it's, it's very flavorful to it. So this is a 20 ounce bottle. So I will be putting in about 12 ounces. Just pour it right over here. Yep, I'll just ask, can you put beer into corned beef? I think I just answered that for you, huh? Okay, so I'm gonna leave that over here. Natalia X, do you ever peel the red potatoes first? You can, absolutely. And Neil X, can you put in the refrigerator? Uh, the potatoes, you should not put potatoes in the refrigerator, no. Uh, Everybody, oh, sorry. two tablespoons of the pickling spice, okay? You could buy a large one like this, you can get it online. You could uh, go to the grocery store, get it. You can make it yourself. There's a lot, there's about seven, eight different spices in here. So I want to put in about two tablespoons worth of this, okay? And what this does, it really does flavor it. Actually, I think I need just a little bit more. Samantha X, can I cook the corned beef overnight or is that too long? Cook it overnight. What I would say is prepare everything now, maybe before you go to bed, put the crock pot on, something like that. What I want to do, I just want to show everybody this, and then we'll take some more questions. Now you want, with the pickling spice, you want to take water and just make sure that your corned beef is covered in here, okay? And you're going to cook this on low, not on the high or medium. Cook it on low for about eight hours, okay? You will know when it's fork tender. Emily X, can I use regular beer? Regular beer? Uh, the stout does give it a really good flavor, okay? Uh, but can you use the regular? Absolutely. Barbara X, is a pressure cooker a good way to cook corned beef? If yes, do you have any suggestions? Uh, the pressure cooker can be. Uh, I typically haven't used it. I only uh, have people that I've heard feedback from, and they absolutely love it in there. I'm just going to take the cabbage. I want to take this little end off, Okay. We don't cook the cabbage until eight hours later, okay? Once the corned beef is cooked, okay, we are then going to put it into the pot. I made one yesterday, and we're going to try to get as many questions and comments answered and all that, but I certainly want to give you all the information I have for you. Uh, I made one yesterday, and it got done a little while ago. And what it is, I'm going to show you. So this right here, okay, that's in there, will be in there for eight hours, will look just like this here, okay? So you can see it really cooks down all these vegetables in here. Here is the corned beef that is just about to kind of break and, and is very, very tender. At this point, after the eight hours, that is when you want to cut the cabbage into wedges, okay, just like this. Patricia X, can I use the mini red potatoes? The mini, absolutely, yes, that would be fine. And Natalia X, how about just using the packet that comes with the corned beef as your spice? Not every time does a packet come with the corned beef, uh, but a lot of times it does. The ones that I, I had just bought did not come with, so sometimes you need to have it on hand, okay, or check it at the store before you come home. I am just going to put in 
this cabbage right here, and we're gonna let this cook for about 45 to 50 minutes. The reason you don't put it in for eight hours is it would just be mush, okay? And you don't want that. Paul X, should you reduce cooking time if less than four pounds? If less than four pounds, yes. And you, you'll notice, you just go in there and you feel the brisket, you will feel it falling apart on you. Okay. Natalia said, I have a really old slow cooker that has temperatures not low and medium. What temperature correlates to low? Uh, the the, if you're using an old crock pot, old uh, slow cooker, anything like that, uh, just just put it on there and it will be fine, okay? Uh, it means it's not going to go to high. It means it's not going to be very, very low. It will be fine now. Kelly X, how would this work with a rice cooker? A rice cooker? I would find that it would be hard to, to do it with a rice cooker. Okay, I'm actually just going to put this lid on here. We're going to let that cook for a while, and then I'm going to show you what the cabbage should look like. Okay. Lucinda X, what brand of corned beef did you buy, and what is the cut you're using? Uh, I had gotten my cut from a butcher, so there was no real brand on there. There are so many brands out there. Uh, typically, you want to look for, again, if it's flat, you're looking for a leaner cut. If you have the one with the point on it. Uh, that will be a fattier cut, okay? Um, if you have fam members in the family that like both, you know, lean, like it a little fatty, just buy the whole brisket. It is going to go from this size right to this size, okay? And how do you slice the meat? I am going to show you how to slice the meat. I'm going to set up the whole platter in just a little while, okay? While this is cooking now, this is when you make your sauce to dip it in, okay? I know we traditionally use just a little bit of mustard, but I have a little sauce that I like to use. And uh, if, you, if you're making this with me at home, feel free right now to start making it in, okay? Margaret X, won't the potatoes get well done and mushy? The potatoes won't. If it's on low and using the red potatoes, they're, I'm going to show you one that was cooking for eight hours, okay? If I can dig one out, okay. Um, Patricia X, can I cook two corned beefs at the same time in the crock pot? If so, for how long? As long as it fits, it is fine. Uh, Let's see. Natalia. Okay, oh. so I'm just going to go back to the potato. If you see, I'm holding this with a fork. This cooked for actually over eight hours, okay? Still intact. Use the red potatoes. That is why they are always on sale with the corned beef. All year, you know, all March. Natalia X, what's the difference between b beef brisket and corned beef? The corned beef brisket uh, has been submerged in like a salt and it kind of makes the meat pink. Uh, you really need to have the corned beef compared to just a traditional regular beef brisket. This is beef brisket, but it is cured and has so much salt in it. That's what keeps the meat pink. I'm just going to whip up a little sauce, okay? All you need is a quarter cup of horseradish. Whether you like the hot or whether you like the mild, use whatever one you like. I thought that was brown sugar for a second. <laughs> and then you want two tablespoons of the grain mustard, okay? This is the one I use here. If you don't have the grain and you want to use a Dijon, feel free to use that but two tablespoons of the grain mustard. Just like that. You like my measurements? Lynn X, when do we add the first tablespoon of butter? First tablespoon of butter. Uh, you, you can add that when you are going to put in the cabbage. I'm going to add that in just a little bit because it has 50 minutes to cook, okay? And the butter inside here will uh, kind of give it a nice creamy texture inside it. I just want, I have the green mustard, I have the horseradish, and now I want to put the sour cream. It is a half cup of sour cream and a little kosher salt and black pepper. Okay, and then that is your sauce and it, it will be ready to use when this is done. John X, what's the term corn mean and wh like where does it come from? Uh... The corn, it, it is something to do with, of course, the Irish soda bread. Uh, it does, there's no corn, anything in there. 
Um, no, nothing to do, uh, just a little, I guess, Irish theme to it. That's really it. I am just taking this sauce here. This is really, really good for the corned beef. A little bit of kosher salt and a little bit of black pepper. So what you do, just mix this around really good. This sauce goes excellent with corned beef. If you don't want the horseradish too strong in there, just take out a little bit, maybe cut it in half, okay? But this will be delicious with it. So what I'm gonna do is put this in my serving bowl right here. This way it will be ready to enjoy. What do you have, Chris? Lois X, is horseradish bottled or grated? Uh, this one is bottled, uh, but the grated you certainly could use. Okay, and that, would, that would be fine. Eileen X, when do you add the three tablespoons of unsalted butter? Uh, the, I, I'm going to add one of it right in here now into my corned beef and cabbage. You can take it and you can take the cabbage and just kind of toss the cabbage with it. Or you could just drop this right in. I'm just going to put this right in here with it. We're going to let that cook. You do not want that, that cabbage to be really mush. You want a little crispness to it, but definitely some softness to go along with it as well. Yes. Dracula said she made the Irish, Irish soda bread and it was delicious. Excellent. That is great. Thank you so much. So everybody, this should be all set in the pot. Your crock pot should be on. I am just going to take some fresh parsley and I'm going to have this on the side for when my corned beef and cabbage is done. You do know it's an eight, eight hour program, right? <laughs> okay. And then I will have my butter ready. Just going to take the parsley and just give it a nice chop. I use the Italian parsley. The Italian parsley has the most flavor over the curly parsley. I'm just going to chop this up really good. Barbara said, I think corn refers to the salting process. The rock salt looked like kernels of corn in the olden days. Sounds very well. Yep, could be. Everybody, just leave the parsley just like that. Now, when you're enjoying the corned beef, some people may just want the sauce. Some people may want just to dip it into the broth. This broth with the stout beer just gives it so much flavor, okay? So I'm just gonna put a little bowl because I wanna show you how to set up your St. Patrick's Day dinner. And while this is cooking, we'll slice the, the corned beef in a little while, we'll come back to that, but I am gonna start on the Irish soda bread biscuits now, okay? Um, everybody, uh, Get out your buttermilk, get out your butter. If you had butter out for a while, put it back and get another half stick because you want it to be very, very cold. It's very important, okay? So we'll put these flowers right over here. Just, if you are making the Irish soda bread biscuits, you do want to turn your oven on to 375 right now. Because as soon as they are done making them, they need to go in the oven because the baking soda, the baking powder, and the buttermilk, it will start reacting. So you do want to send them right into the oven. Okay. Neil X, no egg in soda bread. Any reason? No egg. This Neil, there's so many uh, different recipes out there. This one does, it does not need any egg. Um... Uh, there's many that just have a little bit of uh, baking powder, but no baking soda. Some just have baking soda. I have a combination of both of them, and it gives it a nice balance. So, okay. So everybody, if you're making the biscuits with me or just watching, what you want to do right now is get two cups of the all-purpose flour. Make sure it is nice and level, just like that. If you put too much in there, you are gonna have crumbly muffins, okay? I will get the question, so I'm gonna answer it now. Can I make this into an Irish soda bread? No, you really can't because it's a different recipe. I actually have a different recipe for it. it has all the same ingredients, but different measurements, okay? 
The muffin has typically more sugar in it. The sugar, what it does, it gives it its moisture and it gives it the crust of the muffin, okay? So, very important, okay, to take a quarter cup of the sugar. Put that right in here. And then you want to have one and a half teaspoons of the baking powder. That will give the muffin a nice rise. So take a half teaspoon and then a half teaspoon of the baking soda. Make sure it's nice and level. The way to tell if it's still fresh is put a little vinegar on it. If it starts bubbling, it's still good. Okay. And then we want a half teaspoon of salt to bring out any flavors that may be in whatever baked good you are doing. Okay. Take a wire whisk, a spoon, anything you may have, mix all of those ingredients together, okay? I hope you will all make this with your family for St. Patrick's Day, or I hope you're making it along with me right now, too. So everybody, you want ice cold butter, okay? A half of a stick of butter. So I'm just going to peel this. I'm going to cut it up into little chunks. And then I am going to crumble it up. You could take a pastry cutter, cut it in. You could grate it with a box grater and just kind of shave it in. But I'm just going to kind of chop it with a knife and go in with my hands. And that way we could talk. We can answer questions. We can go over many things about this class. Okay, I'm just going to dice this really small. Because what I want to do is make this into... Like almost like little coarse crumbs, okay? It'll take you about two, three minutes to really do this. So you probably have the bare hands at home. So all you gotta do, go in there just like this, okay? These muffins will be really great when they come out of the oven. They'll be great tonight. Tomorrow morning, they'll still be good. After that, they start losing it because if you think if you go to a bakery, it's very good the first day. The second day, still okay, and it starts losing it. So whatever you're not going to enjoy, just uh, put in the freezer. Get all the air out and freeze them. Bernard X, salted or unsalted butter? I always use unsalted butter because then you're starting with no salt in your recipes. But if you only have salted butter, you would want to reduce, um, reduce the salt uh, in half because a quarter teaspoon is what is in a stick of butter, okay? So you would want to kind of cut your butter in half. I'm sorry, your salt. Timothy X, how many muffins does this recipe yield? This, I would suggest in between the eight to 10. Anytime you are making this for a large group, large family, you want to make more because you have the buttermilk, I suggest that you just uh, double the recipe, even triple the recipe. Just make sure you don't forget any ingredients to double or triple the recipe, okay? So what I'm doing is kind of like pinching the butter, just kind of getting this into coarse crumbs here, okay? Everybody, our next food festival, we're going to be doing some spring dishes, and it is on April 10th, a Saturday, and we are going to do a spring facility with asparagus and cherry tomatoes. We're going to do an Asian orzo chicken salad with toasted almonds on it. You don't have to put the almonds on if you don't like the nuts or allergic. And then we're doing a blueberry cheesecake galette, okay? So I'll show you a really nice dough to make for that one, okay? So everybody, I am done with mine. Nice coarse crumbs just like that. Now we want to take one full cup of buttermilk. This is very important. I really want to go over this. Can you make buttermilk? Absolutely. To make buttermilk, you would take one cup of milk, a tablespoon of lemon juice, or a tablespoon of vinegar, white vinegar. Put it in there, let it sit for five minutes, and you do have buttermilk. But if I have the choice, which one am I going to use? I am going to use the store-bought one because it, it 
has a different consistency. Uh, it is thicker, it is richer, and it will make you a better biscuit or make you a better Irish soda bread muffin, whatever you may be using. When you buy this, I know you always think, I have some left over. What do you do with it? Make buttermilk pancakes, make more of these muffins, okay? Uh, you can make uh, buttermilk fried chicken, so there's many uses for it. So I'm just going to put in one cup. Anytime you are baking, always try to take out your dairy ahead of time, okay? Because what that will do is let it incorporate in the batter better. Timothy X. Shake this really good. Timothy X is reduced fat buttermilk okay? Reduced fat buttermilk is pretty much the only one that is out there now. I hardly ever see the full fat one. And yes, totally fine. Yep, Emily said when she went to ShopRite, they only had light buttermilk. That's all they have, yes. They started doing that probably about 15 years ago. Remember when the low fat craze came? That is when they started switching over to it. See, I'm showing you the rich consistency of this. So one full cup. And again, buy this one. It's worth it. Not just that brand, but just the store-bought one. Take your buttermilk, put it right in here, and then you are also going to add in, if you like caraway seeds, take one teaspoon of caraway, but if you only like a little, you do half. If you like more, you put more in there. And then you want a half of a cup of raisins. Now raisins, I want you to know, they are very, very dry. So if you say, I love raisins, and you just go and you add more into the batter, your bread is going to come out drier because these raisins are so thirsty that they absorb all the moisture. So the more raisins that go in your, your baked good, the drier it will get. So if you want more raisins, what you need to do is take some and put them in hot water for about 10 to 15 minutes and then dry them and you can put some extra in there. Okay, but for this recipe, you do want about a half of a cup. Timothy X, are craisins an okay substitute for raisins? Yeah, you can put the craisins in uh, or the dried cranberries. I do prefer the dried cranberries because the craisins have a grape juice in there, and I don't think it goes really well for the Irish soda bread or soda bread muffins. Everybody, I'm just going to take some yep. questions in a second. All I want to do is take this mixture now, mix it until it is combined. Don't over mix it at all, okay? If you over mix it, you get a tough muffin, a tough scone, a tough bread. Whatever the recipe says to do, that is exactly what you want to do. What do you got, Chris? Neil was asking about the, for the corned beef, when you simmer the pot, the cover slightly open, would you, how would you describe summer? Uh, simmer. Simmer. How would I describe simmer? Simmer is at your lowest temperature. Only put a, a, a cover on it if the recipe calls for the cover on there. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't, okay? Always with a, a slow cooker, it will have it on there. Tamara said she made hers with dried cranberries and they all loved it. That's great, that's great. So I'm trying to just get this batter all mixed just until there is no flour mixed in here. Okay, this is a very wet, sticky, heavy batter, but it will make these biscuits so delicious. Remember, have your oven on to 375. You are going to want to bake these 20 to 25 minutes. 25 minutes will be the most. The way to tell it if they're done is kind of put your finger on top of the muffin or the side of it. And if it kind of feels like your finger would sink in, still has a little more cooking, if it kind of springs back, it's done. Robin said, I made the soda bread muffins the other day and it came out great. That is great. Thank you so much, Robin. Okay, so you can see the cabbage cooking along nicely. Yes, Chris? Natalia said, I've heard in the past to add the raisins before the liquid. Please comment. Uh, you certainly can. Uh, you don't have to because it's as long as it is getting mixed in there, that is fine. You could take the dry ingredients with the butter, all crumbled, add the caraway, add the raisins, and then add the buttermilk too. You could do it that way. It's really getting all mixed up in there. 
you want to take either a little butter or a little spray. I These are medium-sized muffins, so I am just giving it a quick spray, okay? I have been doing more so eight to nine muffins at the most. It becomes a nice size muffin, okay? But if you're trying to cut back and you're gonna only have one for dinner or breakfast, make a dozen, but reduce the time, maybe 18 to 20 minutes, because the less batter, the less time it needs in there, okay? I just wanna make sure that my dough is completely mixed, so I'm just gonna go in here, put a glove on here. I want to make sure all of that flour from underneath is all combined, and it is, okay? So I'm just going to show you the consistency of the dough. You can see it's wet, it's heavy, it's sticky. That is perfect. By it being wet and sticky, that is going to make it a very moist muffin, okay? Please don't change anything on this recipe, okay? Natalia X, can we freeze these to use at a dinner next, week, next Wednesday? You certainly could, but I have to tell you, there is nothing like it. So you see how easy this was to make. At least it's easy for me. I do this every day. But what you can do is make the batter, uh, and then right before your company or whatever you may be doing, and then put them right in the oven. You're probably talking St. Patrick's Day. I would have all the ingredients all ready, all measured, make life easy, and you're gonna you're gonna like them better with your uh, St. Patrick's Day dinner. Alex X, do you recommend not using the muffin paper? Uh, you can use the muffin paper or, or just uh, a little butter or spray. Any of that will work. So everybody, I am just going to take, lower this flour right here. I'm gonna put it right up here so Chris can get good shots on this. So I'm just gonna drop some batter in here. Okay. I am going to make eight of them, okay? These will take me approximately the 22 to 25 minutes. When I bake these, I want to bake these towards the lower rack of the oven, and I want to put a sheet of aluminum foil on the rack above, and what that actually does, it prevents it from getting too dark, too crisp, uh, and you, you will do that with your scones, you will do that with any of your, like your breads, your quick breads. Uh, all those different things. Muffins. Let's see. Susan asked if you could repeat how much buttermilk you put in here. How much buttermilk? One cup. And there should, everybody, the recipe should be out there for, uh, at your library. Okay, whatever library you signed up. I'm actually doing nine. Nine will be fine, right, Chris? Yes. <laughs> I'll just have one extra then. One extra. Uh, Neil asked, how long to cool the loaf for the Irish soda bread? To cool when we use the the different recipe, the Irish of uh, the Irish soda bread, uh, 10, 15 minutes. You know what? Warm with a little butter on it. It's really good. So you don't need to let it cool that long. Okay. So everybody, this is the way the these muffins or biscuits would go into the oven. Again, lower rack, three seventy five. Piece of aluminum foil on the rack above prevents them from getting too dark. They go really good with your corned beef and cabbage dinner, okay, for St. Patrick's Day. I do want to show you what they will look like when they come out of the oven, okay? They are gorgeous. And they are right here. This is exactly what they will look like, okay? Margaret X, no crosses? Crosses, yes, Margaret, yes. You're so good. You've watched me, haven't you? So yes, everybody, before you do put them in the oven, Margaret is right. You put a little cross on each one. And the reason you do that, in Ireland, they feel it will keep the devil away. So I, whenever I do this program, I always tell everybody this story. I go to many different libraries on Long Island in person when we're allowed to. And when we do that, I give everybody a plastic knife so they could put their little X in either their muffin or, they, or their Irish soda bread. So I had a lady who was just keep putting more crosses, more crosses kept going. And I had to walk around to her and I had to say, could I ask what you're doing? And she said, I had such a bad week that I am just trying to keep everybody away. So she just kept doing it. 
So I just thought, imagine if I gave it that knife in, you know, the beginning of 2021, you know, thinking about 2020, she would have been like this with the muffins, right? <laughs> so, uh, oh, I always remember, always a you know, nice funny story in that, but you just cut a little cut into each one. And what it does just kind of opens it up as well. But these muffins are really, really good. Okay. So I'm going to go back to the corned beef and cabbage. Okay. Move these flowers over here. And again, I hope everybody will be making this with your friends, family. Put this butter over here. I'm going to leave the parsley over to the side. Yes, Chris? Joy's X, do we lock the cover of the crock pot while it's cooking? Do you lock it? Uh... It just needs to have that cover on there, but, uh, you know, I don't have a lock on mine. Mine just, just like this, so I just kind of cover it just like that. Neil X, fine. is that to release steam, too? Uh, yeah, I'm not sure what you mean by that, Neil, to release steam, because uh, it's got the cover on it, so it wouldn't be to release steam, though. So, everybody, I'm going to let this cabbage keep cooking. And I am going to go in and get my corned beef. Laura X, can we see the inside of a muffin? The inside of a muffin. Absolutely. Were you at my last class? Because I, th what did I do last time? Somebody asked me to cut something in half. Was that you, Laura? Let's see. Um, Laurel X, do you put water in empty muffin tins? Do I? Uh, I don't. Uh... I find it's very minimal if it does anything at all, but I do hear, you know, like for the moisture of it, it can help, but I've never seen that it does much of it. Everybody, these muffins right here, just going to cut one in half. John X, what do you do with all this food? You can't eat it all. Don't I mail it to your house, John. That is exactly what I'm going to do. Can I get your address, please? You're like, yeah, definitely. <laughs> He's kidding. I'm the one that eats it all. So this is what it looks like. Well... I, I will tell you what I do with a lot of the food. My my son, who uh, not Chris, who's here. My other son, Robert, he's an EMT, and he is a uh, he tests at the COVID sites. So I do send a lot of food with them uh, to their site so they can enjoy that for because what the work that they do is just incredible. So uh, I try to do that. Susan X, how long do you cook the cabbage for? The cabbage, forty five to fifty minutes. Okay. Mrs. Jackie said to send it to the Seaford Library. <laughs> Hello, Mrs. Jackie. How are you? Miss Jackie. Let's see. Neil said, or X, does cutting steam, does cutting release steam from the muffin? Cutting it, uh, release steam? Yeah, but I would not say do it for the sake of, just so you can have it sooner. Just give it the few minutes. Uh, warm is just fine. Okay, everybody, I have the corned beef out. I want to show everybody, if you see the lines in a corned beef, they go just like this, okay? So when you are cutting it, you don't cut with the grain, which is this way. You cut against the grain. So you turn it to its side, okay? The North Trails Library said, thank you for donating food to frontline workers. And Kirsten said, so nice of you. Ah, uh, thank you. Hello, Kathy. Now this, absolutely fork tender. You can see it breaking apart just like that. Okay, that is exactly what you want. So I am just going to put some right on here. The, the size I was using, I used about, about two and a three quarter pound one. Uh, because I knew I was cooking two of them, so I didn't want to have too much. Okay. I know my dinner tonight. Corned beef? Yes. Is, there, is he the luckiest cameraman in the world? <laughs> Tom X, carrots, how long do you cook it for? Carrots in with the corned beef, the same amount of time as the corned beef. Josephine said, did not see the beginning. Can you cook it on the stove instead of the crock pot? Absolutely, yes. And you would actually cook it at less time, but never bring it to a boil. Always simmer it, okay? So I am just going to put some of this on the platter, just like this, okay? 
Doesn't that look absolutely beautiful? And this is the lean cut. And the lean cut, this is going to have actually so much flavor. And it is just falling right apart, which is exactly what you want. So if you dip this corned beef into some of this juice, it's unbelievable. Or put it a little bit of this sauce onto the corned beef. Really, really good as well. Okay. Neil X, can I get Chris's job when he's in school? <laughs> <laughs> Neil, you you know the ropes, right? You got it down, right? Okay, let me check in here. What I actually want to do is I want to get some of the vegetables that I cooked earlier. You just want to strain it. Again, eight hours, the red potatoes in here, not mush. They hold up really good. It's the different potatoes that you really got to buy, okay? The certain potatoes that just do not boil well. Again, I am just going to put some of this on here. We will come back to the cabbage in a little while because that does still need a little bit more cooking. Annex, add the cabbage to slow cooker, same five minutes. Uh, you just add the, um, the cabbage after the eight hours and then just let it kind of sit in there for about 45, 50 minutes, and that is it. Tom X, what is the white sauce? The white sauce. The that one that you made. That is the sauce that we made earlier with the um, sour cream, the mustard, and the horseradish. So if you did come on late, you could rewatch this just to kind of see exactly how I made it uh, and, the, and the correct measurements, okay? Natalia said... Temperature on my pot goes from 200 to 400 degrees. What should I cook the corned beef at? Uh, like around the 250 <laughs> would be per perfect for it, okay? So I'm just going to finish this cabbage right here. We have our Irish soda bread biscuits, corned beef and cabbage. Bonnie X, do you unplug the slow cooker when you add the cabbage? Uh, I don't. Now, if I do notice that the corned beef is done and I don't want it to really fall apart, I will take it, cover it, and let it rest on the side. Okay. John X, will the corned beef gr will the corned beef grow hair back? The corned beef? Yeah. Uh, no. Okay. So everybody, I am gonna make. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna do the St. Patrick's Day peppermint ice cream shake. That way, maybe my cameraman can enjoy a little while we're, we're doing this. Yeah. He's like, yeah, life is good now. <laughs> so everybody, if you are making this, just get, you know, whatever type glass, a straw, have that ready. Okay. I am going to put in a quarter cup of whole milk, okay? If you want to use the reduced, anything like that, it is fine. So about a quarter cup. Cindy X, when you add the cabbage to the slow cooker, what temperature is the slow cooker at? Uh, it's in around the 225, 250. It's very low, okay? It is just simmering. Uh, I am going to put in one pint of vanilla ice cream. Just going to drop that right in here. Yep. It's going to go in, I promise you, everybody. Yep, there it is. Yep. You don't want to waste good ice cream, right, Chris? Nope. Okay, drop that right in there. I want a half teaspoon of peppermint extract. Okay, so if you're making this peppermint ice cream shake, please get it. So about a half teaspoon. So just a little bit. That's all it needs. The extracts are very, very strong, especially if you're using the pure, which you should. The pures are always the best. A half teaspoon of vanilla extract, vanilla extract coming down in price. 16 ounce bottle now is $19.99. It was $35, so that's pretty good. And a little bit of the green. Uh, Chris, you hand me my gloves over there, please? Yes. Uh, green food coloring, because with the food coloring, you want to use gloves or something because uh, I don't want to have green fingers. I've gotten that many a times. Okay. 
So three to four drops of the green food coloring. Natalia asks, what's the internal temperature of the meat when it's done for the corned beef? Uh, it is about 145. That is a, a, the, the least that you can cook it to, okay? Karen said, couldn't find the pints in the market, but a half gallon. You got more. You can make more of them, Karen. <laughs> That's fine. They do sell the pints, but, you know, so many times now... They are selling the ones with all the different flavors in it, too. So sometimes you do have to get a half gallon. You probably didn't get a half gallon, right? I don't know if they sell them. Uh, maybe a couple stores still have them. Eileen X, can we use mint extract in instead? Mint extract? Yeah, you could use that. Yes, that would be fine. Okay, so I am just going to turn this on. Okay, this is very, very easy. This will make about one to two servings. Steve X, what's the what type of ice cream is that? It looks very rich. Uh, it was Friendly's. How's that? Was it that? Yeah, that it was did friendly, look good. Yeah. Okay, and I'm just gonna turn this on to high. <laughs> I didn't want to hurt your ears out there. Okay, so perfect for St. Patrick's Day, right? So if you're staying home, which most of us I know are, just put it in just like that. Karen said pints were $4.99 and half gallon was $3.29. So which one did you buy, Karen? <laughs> and Anne asked, can you add Bailey's asking for a friend? Bailey's, uh, yeah, asking for a friend, huh? Sure. Yeah, absolutely. Why not? And then just top this off with some whipped cream. You could put some more. And then they have some green sanding sugar that you could always buy. Okay, it's it's just like this. Buy it online. Buy it by the bakeries. Okay. And just kind of top it off just like that. Okay. So I'm going to have... Chris, put that over by our... Actually, I'll do it. You're busy enough, Chris. Okay, so I am just going to switch my electric. Anybody else, any other questions before we do our mint chocolate chip brownies with our Andy's candies? Tamara said that looks great, and the BPL Children's Department said so pretty. Thank you so much. Thank you. You guys are awesome. Okay, so everybody, with this mix here, the brownies, use any box mix. Pillsbury, Duncan Hines, Betty Crocker, whatever you want, okay? I'm not at your house or at your library right now, so whatever you may be using, you have to use, of course, the ingredients that they tell you. How many eggs, how much oil, how much water, okay? They said Chris is a great camera person. Thank you. Uh, who was that from? The BPL Jones Department. Uh, Bay poor blue point. Gail. How are you, Gail? Okay, so some brownie mix here. They're gonna cook in a 350 oven. Okay. I am gonna add in two eggs. You always check your eggs before you bake or before you eat them. Put them in some water. If they stay at the bottom, they're very fresh. If they start bouncing, they're getting older, but they're very safe. But if they come to the top, you want to get rid of them. Okay. So, two eggs. Eggs are getting pretty cheap right now. And then you want a half a cup of vegetable oil. And three tablespoons of water. Just like that. Okay. We're going to mix this batter together really good. Okay. This will, in an 8x8 eight eight, uh, serving bowl that you're going to put in your oven, it would take approximately 34 to 38 minutes. Okay. Every oven, every um, recipe is going to tell you a little different. So just check what your box mix does say, unless you're making them from scratch. 
Lisa said Ghirardelli brownies are fabulous, too. They are good. Yes, that, yep. Uh, Teresa asks, what about the parsley? I think for the... You want me to put parsley in my shake? <laughs> no, no, no. That's going to be in a little while. I'm going to go back over there. I haven't forgotten it. Okay. So just take your brownie mix, just like this. Make sure it is very well incorporated. Okay. Emily said, I use applesauce instead of the oil. They come out yummy. Yep. You're right, Emily. Em everybody out there, to who are how many are ever watching, Emily's right. Okay. <laughs> Everybody, just take your pan, put a little parchment paper in there. It'll make it nice and easy to come out, and just give it a quick spray, okay, onto the parchment paper. I want to take this mix now, and I'm going to put this in the oven, 350 for about 34 to 38 minutes. I want to get everything out of here. These are so good especially when we decorate them. And we're gonna put some Andy's candies on this before they go into the oven. Okay, right there. So everybody, this summer, I will be doing these food festivals all year long, okay? So spring, summer, fall, winter, okay? We're gonna keep doing these because it's been so much fun for, I think, all of us, and I absolutely love doing these. In the summer, we are, in addition to the food festivals, we are also gonna do a summer camp, a baking and cooking camp. It will be every Monday night from like June 26th till the middle of August, except for July 4th weekend. That one will be on a Tuesday just because of the federal holiday. Lisa said, that's a great tip. The brownies always stick when we make them. And also, the North Trails Library said, we are very excited to be part of your eight-week 2021 summer camp series. All are invited. Mondays will never be the same. Aw, oh, Kathy, thank you. And Jenny X, is oil spray a healthy choice? O oil spray? Uh, healthy? I, I can't say it's a healthy thing, but you're going to get less calories that way than maybe putting butter or something like that and oil on it. And I just give it such a quick spray that's so minimal. Everybody, I have these Andy's candies, and I know you would love to just reach through that camera and just get one, right? I'll do it for you. No. Chris did it. <laughs> just kind of layer these just like this right on here. Okay. And the quicker you move doing this, the quicker it will not melt in your hand. Laura X, does Chris get to lick the bowl, the bowl later? Yes, I can. <laughs> I, well, Laura, I guess uh, Chris answered is the question. I guess I don't have any say in it. Ray X, why do you use nonstick spray if you're using parchment paper? Uh, it will help to release the brownies. The brownies will really kind of bond to even the parchment paper. So just that light spray will definitely help it along. Okay, so they get baked right into into this here. Be very cautious that when you're testing it, use just the toothpick, that the toothpick does just come out clean. If it comes out clean, it means your brownies are done. Okay. Or just a little bit more, because if you put your finger on here, you will burn yourself. Don't do that. While this is baking, what we will do is we will get our... Uh, Icing ready for the top of these brownies. Okay, just like that. 350 oven, 34 to 38 minutes. I'll put that right there, Chris. Okay, so let's make some frosting. All you need is three cups of powdered sugar. Here, Chris, I got that. Three cups of the powdered sugar. One stick of butter, room temperature. So you could see, you should be able to squeeze it. You don't want it melted, but you should be able to squeeze it, okay? I want to add in here 
three tablespoons of milk. Try to use the whole milk for this. Two and three. I want a half teaspoon of the peppermint extract or mint extract. Either one would be fine. And then just a couple drops of the green food dye. Again, if you got a little gloves, something like that, it will keep it off your hands, okay? See, it got me earlier. Yes, Chris? Uh, do you use unsalted butter for this? Yeah, I just typically keep unsalted butter in the house. And Laura X, do you sift the sugar for lumps? Uh, I don't because when you uh, just blend this up, it is going to just kind of mix up really, really well. So just a couple drops of the green food coloring. Put that lid on there. You don't want to get that all over. Okay. I am just going to blend this up. Okay. Take a spatula and just keep getting all of the powdered sugar down into the bowl. And everybody, if you have other questions right after we are done doing this class, we will stay on. If you want to just ask me anything about myself, you want to ask Chris anything, uh, you have any other cooking questions, we will stay on, okay? Uh, this is to make a fun event each month. Wish we could do it more, but I think uh, it makes it special when it's just every once in a while. When it gets to May, June, July, August, we are going to go to during the week uh, at 7 o'clock because if you're like me, you had enough winter and you are ready uh, to be outdoors as late as possible. So that was my thinking on that. Okay, so this is mixed really well. I want to fold in now, or I could even just add these right in, a half cup of the mini chocolate chips. And whatever kind you like would be fine, whether it's semi-sweet, milk chocolate, dark. I'm just getting this to where this is combined. I just thought of this. Do you know what you could put in there? I'm afraid to ask, Chris. Break up pieces of Andy's candies. What, in here? Yeah. See, you don't know my recipe. You is don't it? know what's happening next. You're already doing it? No, I'm not doing that. So I'm just unplugging this here. Take this off. Leave this on the side. Now, 38 minutes went by, so I want to show you what my cake looks like. My brownies, I should say. Okay. This is exactly what it will look like. So you could see, these are the Andes candies. That is where, if you touch it when it's hot, you will get burnt, so don't do that. And this, of course, the brownie. It just kind of makes like a nice checkerboard here. Lynn asked, are all these classes through the library? Yes, these are all through the library. I do do some private events, especially virtually now. Um, I've done with the Girl Scouts and some other, um, you know, different places. So if anybody out there is looking to do anything, you could just... Uh, just let me know, okay. Deanne asks, what is April's? What is April's menu? Yes. I will give you that one second. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to ice this up, okay? Take this frosting. It's nice and loose, which is perfect because it's going to spread so nicely right on these brownies. What do you got, Chris? You got a question? Yeah. Robbie X, I, or said, I ordered corned beef, but there was, no, there was no corn anywhere on the outside or inside. Did the store give me the wrong meat? No, there's no corn in it. It's just the word for the meat. That's all it really is. Okay. All right. Everybody, I am just going to take this right now. Just kind of bring this over right to the edges here. If you want it to, where you can eat it easier, you can kind of save it with the, the brownie on the side. It's almost like a pizza where you don't cover it totally. John X, what are Andy's candies? Andy's candies, they are addicting chocolate uh, yes. mint candies. 
Uh, Neil X, no extract for the frosting. Uh, I did put it in. And Natalia X, how about substituting Reese's Thin Cups for the Andes Mints and just using the dye? No mint extract for the icing for people that don't like mint. If you don't like mint, yes, you change it the way. I have to be honest, I don't like mint either. But I had to do it for St. Patrick's Day. And because I love it. And Chris likes it, yeah. So everybody, this is exactly what it looks like. Okay, just going to hold this up. Just like this, the brownies. Now what I want to do, I want to take some Andy's candies, just like this. I'm going to slide this over. And now this is, I think, what Chris was wondering, like, can we do this? Yep. Well, the answer, Chris, is over. Just crush this up really, really good into nice little shavings of Andy's candies. Chris suggested I put this onto the uh, ice cream shake. And now, just put this right on here. Spread that out really good. Make sure you get it all. Lisa said my mom used to buy Andy's candies. They always remind me of her, for, for it is it was a special treat. Uh, yeah, yeah. And Susan X, how many Andy's candies did you chop up for on top of the frosting? Uh, I, I'm, I'm estimating about 15 or 16. It's really a preference. If you just want a little dusting, that's what you do. If you want, if you're a chocolate lover, you go like that. Can I see how that looks? North Trails Library X, is it okay to eat dessert first? To eat dessert first. You know, I thought about doing this first, figuring... The corned beef and cabbage is going to take eight hours to do. So, uh, but yeah, yeah, why not eat dessert first, right? So I hope you'll make this. I am going to put all this over here. Uh, before I go back to my cabbage, I do want to give everybody uh, my schedule for the spring one. I know we had somebody ask about the um, what we are doing. Okay. Uh, it is on... April 10th, and it is at 3 o'clock a Saturday. I figured it's still chilly out. The next one, May, we got to be, we got to do it at night. So we are going to do a spring facility and asparagus pasta, and it will have cherry tomatoes in it. It's really, really delicious. We're going to do an Asian orzo chicken salad, and if you like toasted almonds, some of them on top. And then we're also going to do a blueberry cheesecake galette, which is really good. Blueberries coming into the spring with some lemon uh, going into summer. It'll be perfect for it. Okay. Yes, Chris. Stacy said, I made the Irish soda bread muffins this morning. OMG, so good. Ah, uh, thank you so much. Thanks, Stacy. And let's see. Um, Martha just said, just took my muffins out. Really delicious. Oh, wow. Oh, good. Good. Yeah, so some people making it with us. Uh, yeah, the muffins are, yeah, take them out of the oven. I should have, I should have set a timer for you. <laughs> and Christine X, will this replay on Facebook later? This will be on Facebook. Go to the, the public library or library that you are watching it from. Okay. Uh, if you are just from my page, you can go to my page. It will be up there. If you want to look at some of our old food festivals that we did, we did one February 20th, January 23rd. And then we did a holiday cookie workshop back in December. I think it was around the 12th or 10th, but you'll see it. And if you go to my page, Simply Creative Chef Rob, you will see it, okay? Uh, before I go over to the corned beef and cabbage and show everybody the complete dishes of everything that we did, I just want to say thank you to all the different libraries, the different states uh, that we had. Uh, I'm going to tell you the states that participated today, and it was Arkansas, Massachusetts, Pennsylvania, New York, Connecticut, Kentucky, Texas, uh, Oklahoma, Utah, Rhode Island, Vermont, and New Hampshire. Thank you so much. I, it's been unbelievable working with you all. Uh, it's been a pleasure. 
Uh, I want to keep doing this uh, even when we do go back into the libraries locally. Would love to keep doing this for everybody. Uh, and it's nice where everybody can make it along with us, uh, you know, from home. Yes, Chris. Darlene X, how do you see your schedule on Facebook? Where are your programs listed? If you go to my Facebook page tomorrow night, you will see my whole next week's schedule. Next week, you're going to see a lot of Irish, okay, uh, programs. So uh, pretty much the Irish soda bread muffins that we did today, the Irish soda bread, a different recipe. And then uh, I'm doing an Irish lamb stew. I'm doing an Irish molasses raisin bread. And uh, I believe that may be it. I think that's it. And then we're going on right on to spring. And then we go to Cinco de Mayo. And then we do all summer barbecue goods and all that. We have YouTube videos. We have we Zoom. And we have Facebook uh, classes as well. So let me jump on back over to the corned beef and that. Okay, so everybody, this cabbage I know is done because it is almost right to the 50 minute mark. Okay. And you could actually just kind of take this butter right here, just kind of put it in here. And what it does, it just kind of gives the creaminess of the cabbage. And then you just put it right onto the plate. You could also just take the butter if you wanted to do it a little differently and just kind of drop it right on top of the vegetables and the cabbage as well. Okay, but this, it kind of just gets all caught in between all of the cabbage. This is a really delicious recipe and I certainly hope you make this for your friends and family. See how the, the cabbage is not falling apart, but it is still nice and tender. When it's mush, it means it's overcooked. And we're getting questions ask, asking, what is your Facebook page name? It is simply Creative Chef Rob. So, and then just kind of top this off with some fresh parsley. And I'm just gonna have Chris just go right along here and zoom in on all the different things we made. And now what I would love to do is just answer any questions anybody may have for me. Uh, it could be about this class, it could be about myself, it could be about different dishes we're going to use, do down the line, whatever you like. So Chris, you can let them roll. And if you just want to say hello, please say hello. If you want to comment, I hope you enjoyed this class. This is to bring families to the library, to the families to stay together, to work together, to make their dinner together. To, to sit down as a family, enjoy it, because that did get away from us for quite a while. But I think the last year it really did come back where we do sit down as a family. So some good things really do come out of this. Yes. Lisa X, what time is dinner? Putting on my shoes now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's see. Anybody else, any other questions or comments? Getting a lot of thank yous. Happy St. Patrick's Day. Happy St. Patrick's Day, everybody. And it looks delicious. Thank you from Cedar Lane. Oh, hello. Right down the road, yes. Yeah. Kirsten asks, what are you making for your Easter dinner? Uh, I just got St. Patrick's Day. You know, I really don't know. Uh, believe it or not, last year since we, you know, we all had to pretty much stay away from everybody, uh, we ended up just going to a nice restaurant out uptown and ordered takeout food and... Uh, you know, we just got some nice dinners, and it was nice not to cook for a day. Let's see. Um, Bernard X, how do I get your sesame seed breadstick salad recipe? Uh, it would If you go to the January 23rd, uh, fa my Facebook page, you'll see the class there, and the recipe should be up, as well as many of the other libraries that are participating today. If you go to the library that you're from, 
and they participate, it would be on there. John said, my wife always complains about too much fat. What could you do to re reduce the fat in the corned beef part? Buy the leaner cut, buy the flat cut, okay? Don't buy the point. The point has a lot of fat in it. Uh, this one, if you look at this, it's very lean, okay? So if you're watching your fats, this is the cut you want, okay? If you want the best of both worlds, the point and the flat, that is where you want to buy the whole brisket. Patricia X, what was the brown sauce? The brown sauce. This is just the juice from that it has been cooking in for eight hours and the taste just to dip either your vegetables or your corned beef in there. Really, really good. Let's see. Ray X, what is the what is blackstrap molasses and can it be used in place of regular molasses? Uh yeah, it, it it's it's regular. It is just like regular molasses. Uh, it's a brand, and uh, I use that. I will use that in my Irish molasses raisin bread when I do make that. Let's see, Neil X any, or X. Any suggestions on handling the dough for sugar cookies? Hard to manage. For sugar cookies, uh, hard to manage. Uh, Neil, if you're going back to the one that I made back uh, in December. Uh, it's very gentle. It's not made for cookie cutters. It is made, it's very uh, dainty dough, okay? You really want to be cautious with it, be really gentle, but the cookie's so good, okay? Just follow the recipe to a T, and they'll come out good. Joyce X, do you have a roast leg of lamb recipe? Do I have a roast leg of lamb recipe? I do. I don't have one printed. I have one, of course, in my head. I would be able to take one right now and go do it. Uh, perhaps that would be a class that we could do. Deb said, thank you so much, Chef Rob. I'm glad I logged on and my husband and I are already planning using your menu suggestions for St. Patrick's Day. Great. By the way, I'm making Irish soda bread in muffin pans as a favorite. They have more crunch. The Irish soda bread muffins? Yeah. Yep. Great. Great. Absolutely. And Lynn is saying, my daughter and I just had a blast doing this. Oh, and my granddaughter as well. Great. We look forward to more to come. I love when the children are working with mom or dad making this, making their own dinner. Uh, we have this so many times where the kids are making it. And that's what this program is for. It's for children. It's for the teens. It's for the families. And it's for just the adults, too. And any of my recipes, you cut them in half if, if you're just one or two people at home. But if you're eight at home, you just double the recipes. Steve said, you have shown us that cooking is not just cooking, but art also. You are an artist and a chef. Uh, thank you. Thank you. I'll send you the check, Steve. Thank you. <laughs> Neil X, can you overcook meat? You did eight hours for four pounds. Most say 50 minutes per pound. You're right. It, it is usually 50 minutes per pound. That is typically on your regular stove oven. Uh, so uh, you, ch you check it. You know, you, you put your fork into it, you lift it up, you'll be able to tell if it's it's about to fall apart. But the one that I, I did uh, took me like eight hours right to the T. Okay. That was on low. Okay. Whitney said, thank you so much. Can't wait to try the muffins and bread. Happy St. Patrick's Day. Thank you, Whitney. Tamara said, so you don't have to drain the water during the cooking, um, during the cooking for the less of the corned beef. Someone told me to drain it a few times and add fresh water because the corning process can leave the meat salty. Is that necessary? If you want to cut out some of the salt, that's necessary. But if you want that flavor, keep the same original water. North Trails Library said there are good ships and there are wood ships. The ships that sail the sea, but the ships, best ships are friendships, and may they always be. Oh, how nice. Kathy, so nice. John said, good times, Rob. Thank you. You're welcome. Thanks, John. Thank you. Neil said, I made the sugar cookies twice. They don't last long. <laughs> <laughs> Is it because we're enjoying them or uh, neighbors come over and say, what are you baking? I want some. <laughs> so, everybody, thank you so much. I hope all of you people from the library that hire me to do this program, the patrons that watch this, uh, everybody out there, even my neighbors, thank you. You're all so wonderful. I appreciate it. And Chris says, don't go. We have a question or a comment. Uh, let's see. Profran said, I changed the water three times if I buy the point. 
And Patricia X, why did the dough stick to my fingers while making the soda bread? Okay, so when you're making the dough for the soda bread, uh, use a, a wood spoon, to, something to mix it up with. You don't need to go in with your hands. And then all you have to do is kind of take the tablespoon and then just drop it right in the muffin tin, okay? Let's if you have see. gloves, you can always just toss it to make sure that flour on the bottom's all, you know, all incorporated. Profan said the flat I bake. Neil said all for me. <laughs> Tamara said none of the cookies last long. Michelle said thank you, Chef Rob and Chris. Happy St. Patty's Day. Well, and Cindy said this is wonderful. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Everybody, have a great night. Uh, please tell your friends and family to watch this, to watch it at the library that you are from. Okay, and uh, we're going to make this bigger and better. And I'm, I'm, I'm working on menus for the fall right now. I have all my summer ones already done. So everybody, have a great day. Uh, on Long Island here, it's, it's, it's chilly, but it's ni a nice day. So we have time to go out. And don't forget to change those clocks, right? So bye-bye, everybody. Have a great day. Bye-bye. <music>